From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Tarzan and the pirates of Cape Bandera. For some weeks, Tarzan had been working on the small boat he kept near his seacoast cabin. The sails had been mended, the seams caulked, and the deck and cabin revarnished. Now his mighty muscles bulged as he carried aboard casks of drinking water and great hampers of provisions. Suddenly his nostrils quivered and his eyes darted to the shore, for the scent of a gomangane and native was mingled with the salt air. His hand moved instinctively to his great hunting knife. But the hand relaxed and the tenseness disappeared as he recognized the Punya native who stepped from the brush onto the narrow strip of beach. Tarzan! Tarzan! Up on the set. I'm out here on the dock. Tarzan fixed boat? Go away? Yes, Natisa. Yes, I planned for a long time to take my tiny vessel around the Cape and up the eastern coast. The Cape of Good Hope, many moons distance. is dangerous trip for a small boat. <laughs> well, I've, I've never been particularly noted for avoiding danger. But I think the sea will offer fewer enemies in the jungle. No, Tarzan cannot go. Not now. Oh, I suppose I can't go because I'm needed here, huh? All right, Natisa, tell me why you have come. What troubles of the people of Punya now? Ugano not agree who owned three head cattle with Karogo. Mama Nagama has much trouble with boy Torgo, who want hunt all day, not go missionary school. Sui throw mud on clean wash of Zareba. Chief say to Natisa, get Tarzan, bring back to settle trouble. Natisa, your report of the terrible troubles of the Punya tribe makes me more resolved than ever to leave on this trip. I'm afraid I've taken too much responsibility for your people. I, I weaken them by making all their decisions. But what they do? They will settle their own disputes. <laughs> now I know how a president feels when he leaves on a vacation, or a king when he hands the reins to a prime minister. Yes, Natisa, I'm leaving on a vacation. Uh, uh, Tarzan take Natisa with him on occasion? Well, if the messenger they sent for me doesn't return, they'll surely have to settle their own problems, huh? You take Natisa, huh? You shall be first mate, second mate, chief cook, and crew. Natisa, I, I know a lovely spot along the coast, a narrow strip of land that's completely secluded. The fish grow larger, the wild fruit richer, and the ocean bluer. For once, I shall know peace at Cape Bandera. But even as Tarzan and Atisa sailed in the direction of the beautiful Cape, the same narrow strip of land was being discussed in a waterfront dive in Tarak, melting pot of the roughest collection of seamen from Singapore to Caracas. Whoever heard of sailing out of Cape Bandera? There's no trade there, Mr. Godliff. You're so right, Captain Hilk. Even the few natives who used to live there have moved to the mainland. So why should we pick that deserted place for our home port? You'll find out in good time. I'll know before I sign. What ports are call and what cargo? We'll sail any place where they'll buy merchandise without asking questions. And our cargo will consist of whatever we find in the holes of the native dows that ply the coast. Pirating, Mr. Gottlieb? Are you too weak livered for that business? No, I'll do anything for money. But I'm not running a pirate ship for regular skipper's wages. You want Captain Helk, it'll be double wages and shares. Double wages and shares it'll be for you and your crew. Can you get the men you'll need? I can pick them all up on the waterfront before nightfall. I look for only three features in a privateer. Three features? Holes in the soles of their shoes, scars on their faces, and big hands. Huh? It works out. If a man has holes in his shoes, he's desperate enough to play my game. The scars prove he's been in a knife fight or two, and he's been the one to walk away. And the big hands guarantee that he can throttle a man without giving him time to let out a squawk. 
When do we sail, Mr. Gottlieb? As soon as the guns and ammunition are brought to the dock. That'll be shortly after dark. I'll have my crew ready. Now you know why I selected a lonely spot like Port Bandera as a base. No one will interfere with our little game there. <laughs> Heaven help anyone who tries. With a crew of cutthroats, we'll have a board. <laughs> We'll continue with our story in just a moment. Many moons had passed, and Tarzan and Atisa had rounded the southern tip of Africa and had progressed as far as the harbor of Tarak on the eastern coast. We head for land to hunt meat? No, Natisa, we'll we'll trade some hides for a few supplies here and wait for our hunting until we arrive at Cape Bandura. This big harbor, many ships. Uh, what big ones with no sails? Oh, those are steamers. They carry cargo to distant ports. And boats with strange sails? Oh, those are the Latin sails the Arabs use. Well, apparently none of the fleet's going out today. I, I don't understand the inactivity here. Many men on pier? Yes, they're just standing around talking. None of them is loading cargo. Maybe afraid of sharks. Natisa see fins of many sharks in harbor. Yes, I see them too, but I hardly think that... Natisa, look at that lone Arab on the end of the wharf. He... He, he jump in water right near sharks. Grab the tiller, Natisa. I'm going in after him. No, Tarzan. He jump in. You're not... He won't stand a chance with those long Arab robes. Guide our boat to the dock, Natisa. <laughs> Tarzan, watch out! Killer shark head for Arab! It was a race as Tarzan attempted to intercept the shark as it glided rapidly toward the helpless Arab. But despite Tarzan's powerful strokes, the shark reached its goal first. It rolled over and the jagged teeth gleamed wickedly. But before they could sink into its victim, Tarzan's hunting knife found its mark in the killer's sleek belly. The shark leaped high into the air, its tail flailing the water. And then it dove to strike back at its attacker. The churning sea was red with blood as Tarzan wrestled the monster onto its back again. And once more, the knife sank into the white underbelly. Again, and again, and again. The shark shuddered convulsively. The thrashing of the powerful tail ceased. The shark was dead. Tarzan took a few strokes and then swam down and placed his arm around the Arab. He hoisted the inert figure onto the nearby pier. Then, grinning broadly, he clambered onto the rough-hewn dock. Jungle man, save Ismail! Ismail, jump into sea! Ranger, save him from shock! Let's roll him over on his stomach. Try to pump some of the water out of him. Ah, your fellow Arabs seem to have lost interest in you quickly. Let's see if I can return you to this world. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Lotisa, Ty, go to Pier Tarzan. Good. Inhale. Exhale. He come to life? I think so. Then perhaps he'll solve what has always been a great riddle to me. How a man can fight for survival from the time he leaves his mother's bosom and then seek to die by his own hand. You have a fine house here, Ismail Ben Ahmed. Before the month is passed, it will no longer be mine, Tarzan. Oh, you've had business reverses, huh? That's why you attempted to end your life. Reverses? You speak in mild tones. Tarak is the shipping point for materials brought across the Sahara. Ivory, ostrich feathers, hides, tea, curry powder, other things. Until this week, I was the owner of four ships. And what happened? I lost them all, every one of them. And each was loaded to the gunnels with rich cargo. I'm wiped out. The work of a lifetime swept away. By storms? Oh, but surely the captains of your ships must have had warning of their approach. The storms that have befallen the ships of Ismail and his brothers give no warning, for they are man-made. Man-made storms? Perhaps I speak too vaguely. It is the manner of the Arab. 
I mean that my vessels, as well as those of many other small ship owners, have been robbed and then sunk by pirates. Pirates in this day and age? That is why the bales of cargo are piled high on the wharves, and no one dares make a move to load the ships. Those who still have ships are afraid to let them venture forth. But there must be means of combating these pirates. They have sleek, motor-driven ship that easily overtakes the swiftest of our fleet. Our men are brave, but the enemy consists of huge, savage men who climb aboard and strangle those who resist. It seems incredible. Sharks have fed well on the proof of the end, private's infamy. But you have heard enough of Ismail Ben Amit's troubles. You have saved my life. Is there some manner in which I can be of service to you? Well, we came ashore to refill our casks with fresh water and to trade a few hides for some provisions. Your native companion can fill the casks at the clear spring in my courtyard. And it will be my pleasure to supply the provisions you need. Oh, you're most kind. I, I wish there were some way in which I could help you, though, in your trouble. Perhaps when you resume your voyage, you may see the vessel of the pirates. They have always struck at night. And although a few of our seamen have escaped, they have been unable to give an adequate description of the pirate craft. And if you had a description? The government would send the naval police and comb the waters for it. But of course, without a description... Well, when we have stocked our modest galley, we will head for the sea again. But I doubt that a pirate ship will frequent the waters near such an unprofitable district as that of our destination, the quiet cove of Port Bandera. <laughs> Catch the hawser, Nikisa. Throw it up, Tarzan. Ah. Now fasten it well around that tree. Uh, well, it's tied. Ah. Ah, it's good to have my feet upon the earth again. Well, Nikisa, this is Port Bandera. Do you like it? Oh, it's a beautiful place. But why we anchor at edge of beach, not sail into coal? Because for the first time I've arrived to find another vessel here before me. Didn't you see that ship nestled beneath the overhanging boughs? No. Is pirate ship, maybe? No, I hardly think so, for Ben Ahmed said they used a motor-driven ship, and the one moored there is an antiquated sailing vessel. Still, I, I thought it best to take no chances. We make camp here? We'll cache our supplies near here, and then we'll walk to the anchored ship and find out whether they're friends or foes. <laughs> The vessel, half hidden by the overhanging trees at the edge of the cove, was, as a matter of fact, the pirate ship of Mr. Gottliff and his skipper, Captain Helk. During the past months, they had reaped great profits. But even financial success does not always lead to a feeling of security. And as Helk and Gottliff stood on the deck of their moored ship, they argued the point. I still think the naval police may find us even here. In the name of heaven, Captain Helk, why should you worry? If they look for anything, it will be for a sleek motor ship, and we have sailed. Anyone with half an eye could see we aren't rigged to use them. Look, when we sail, we're a trim, speedy craft. When we're in hiding, we're a shabby old sailing vessel. Who's going to examine our rigging or inspect the fake shell with which we cover our modern hull? Well, I'd feel a lot safer if we had more fighting men. Excuses, excuses. I told you to get as many men as you needed, Captain Helm. I got as many as I could trust who lived up to my requirements. Ahoy there! Who are you shouting at? Ahoy! A huge, powerful white man and a native. Well, don't let them come aboard. One of our crew might come up on deck and then... I want him on deck. May need a little help in convincing this man that he should join us. Join us? A stranger we know nothing about? He meets my requirements. He's the most powerful man I've ever seen. He has great hands, obviously. He can't afford shoes. He has a scar on his forehead. May we come aboard? Yes, yes, of course. I'll lower the ladder. Go below and tell the men to crouch by the companionway. What about the native? I'm only interested in the giant. We'll Shanghai him. And we'll feed the native to the sharks. In just a moment, we'll return to our story of Tarzan and the Pirates of Cape Bandera.
The tone of those aboard had been friendly, and so Tarzan and Atisa climbed the ladder without great suspicion. At the top of the ladder, Mr. Gottliff stood in a gesture of friendship, a smile on his face. But there was no smile on the face of Captain Helk, nor on the cruel faces of the burly seamen who crouched behind him in the shadow of the companionway. Now remember, keep still until Mr. Gottliff and I have worked him over to the edge of the companionway here. Right. Cullen, you and Bella grab the native. The rest of you gang up on the white man. Right, Skipper. We got it, okay. We got it. And I want no mistakes. If you let that giant run loose around here... We got guns. And we know how to use them. I want him alive. Pinion his arms so he can't do any damage. What about the native? I don't care what happens to the native. Quiet now. Well, we hardly expected callers in this lonely port. How did we expect to see others? I've spent many months here in the past without catching sight of another human. It's a great pleasure to welcome strangers. Here, here, let me give you a hand. Ah. My name is Gottlieb. I am Tarzan, and my companion's name is Natisa. Welcome, Tarzan, Natisa. Jumbo, one of Gottlieb. Come, I'd like you to meet our captain. Mr. Helk's one of the finest navigators on the coast. Good. There's much I have to learn about the sea. All right, man. Adisa and I sailed around the Cape, but I still find... Uh, uh, what is this? Hold him, man. You're not getting away. Uh, uh, grab his other arm. No, no, not throw Natisha over rail. No, no, Natisha, not swim. No, 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 no. Let me go. I must save Natisha. He's floundering in the water. Finish him off. Well, that takes care of the native. I've never seen such cruelty. Even without your gunfire, Natisa would have died. He couldn't swim. That's very unfortunate. You greet us with friendship, and then you commit murder. Those are harsh words for a man who's being held by six of the roughest men of Africa. We meant you no evil when we boarded your ship. Why did you kill my friend? Why do you hold me captive? It's just a slight precaution. Your friend could be of no use to us, but Captain Helk here feels that you would be an addition to our crew. Is this the way in which you recruit seamen? In our business, we have to be sure of a man before we permit his arms to be free to grasp at a knife. Yes, you're wise. Would I free you? you're not free. Nor will you be unless you throw your lot in with us. We treat her crew well. Double salaries and shares. Double salaries and shares? I see. What must one do in order to earn this great amount? First, a few questions to you. How did you earn that scar on your forehead? When I was a young boy, I had a death struggle with Bolgani, the gorilla. With a gorilla? (laughs) I guess you can take care of yourself. How are your finances, Tarzan? I have seldom had use for money. But I guess you have no objection to it, eh? If... I had a distaste for money. Would I have traveled a great distance to join your pirate crew? He knows who we are. How did you know? A true privateer gives no information of that kind. Surely you know that. Isn't it enough that I am as strong as three men, that I have taken great pains to reach you, and that I thirst for the life of a pirate? That's good enough for me. Release him, men. Welcome to our gentle crew, Tarzan. Mighty tasty, mighty tasty. <laughs> Dig in, Tarzan. You won't find better grub than any galley on the seven seas. It should be good. Meat from the cattle boat sailing from port side. Fruits and spices on their way from the Indies. Delicacies from every land in the world. Have some of this wine, Tarzan. The blood of a dozen men have paid for it. That should make it taste sweeter. Oh, you're quite a joker. Incidentally, Tarzan, I'm the captain of this ship. So far, I've been lenient with you. But when we put to sea, I'll have no breach of discipline. I was unaware that I had broken any rules. The crew is limited to certain parts of the ship. Your only duty is fighting. After this, I do not want to find you snooping about the engine rooms or the carpenter shop. It was just natural curiosity. Natural curiosity sometimes leads to unnatural deaths. But Tarzan had already completed his snooping. Now he knew the secrets of the pirate ship. The manner in which the vessel was disguised, the hiding place of much of the stolen cargo. The task remaining before him was to return to his own small vessel, make his way to Tarak, and there inform the naval police of the description and whereabouts of the ship that had been terrorizing the seas. But when, after several days, he managed to sneak ashore, he found his boat gone. And even as he searched vainly for it, the missing dhow made its way unsteadily to the dock at Tarak. 
You there, in the boat. Throw me your rope. Mateo, here. Now then, give me your hand. I'll help you into the dock. Uh, oh, Santa. You look as though you've been in some sort of a drunken brawl. You shouldn't be roaming around the harbor. Please, me sick, almost drowned. Sail many days. No food or water. Now, a likely story. What's your name? Me, Matisa. Where are the papers for your boat? Papers? Come, come. I'm Lieutenant Kirby of the Naval Police. And we haven't time these days to fool about with those who can't keep papers in their vessels. Natisa not know about papers. I suppose you've stolen the boat. Please, Natisa not steal anything. He bring back boat belong Tarzan. Tarzan captured by bad men at Cape Bandera. Maybe our pirates. No, oh, now I've heard everything. Now you come along with me. In the morning, when you've sobered up, we'll find out the real story about this boat and where you got it. Please, Tarzan in bad trouble. And so are you, my friend. So are you. Unable to find his boat and thus return to Tarak, Tarzan had gone back to the pirate ship. The ship made several journeys during the next few days, but the profits were not great, and the newest member of the crew was not in high favor. I can't understand it, Tarzan. Three raids you've been on, and you've managed to queer things every time. If we weren't short-handed as a result of your stupidity, I'd send you over the rail right now. I'll do better tonight. What's our target? We're going to attack a port instead of a ship. And the stakes are high this time. Is it safe to attack a port? It's never safe to be a pirate. But the wharf at Tarek is groaning with cargo. And if they won't send it out on their ships, we'll go in and get it. And there better be no careless mistakes this time, Tarzan. If there is a mistake, we may sacrifice one of our crew. You sent for me, Commander. Yes, Ben Ahmed. Lieutenant Kirby here arrested a native who couldn't prove ownership of a dow. He claims you know him. Well, I assured the commander it was just a tall story, but he thought it best to check with you. What's the native's name? Uh, I just sent a turnkey to get him. Uh, what did he say his name was, Kirby? Uh, he said his name was Natisa. Natisa? He's the native that accompanied Tarzan to Cape Bandera. Yeah, that's what he said, but Kirby, I... Kirby, I told... Ismail Ben Ahmed, tell him... Tell them you know Natisa. I have already told them uh, what has happened to the man who saved my life. Tarzan captured by bad men. They think they kill me. Natisa believe a pirate. Where is their port? Was it Cape Bandera? Commander, I insist that the naval police ship proceed to Cape Bandera at once. You don't have to insist, Ben Ahmed. I'm quite in agreement. The two of you may come along. We'll be ready to leave within the hour. <laughs> The ship's carpenter had skillfully removed the camouflage of the sleek pirate vessel. The dummy sails had been reefed, and the great diesel motor was driving the ship toward the port of Tarak. The forward deck bristled with guns, and the fierce crew stood at their stations, ready to pillage the wharf. We'll be landing in a few minutes now. Tell him you man that big forward gun. Keep it trained on the dock. Yes, sir. Murphy, you take charge of the loading. Mr. Godliff, be prepared to relay orders to the engineer and wheelman. All right. The rest of you come with me. We'll do the necessary fighting. And don't forget, Tarzan. I've got my eye. What is it, Captain Elk? Boat leaving the dock. Stop the engines, douse the lights. All right. There, we haven't the light showing. Coming this way. Turn the cannon to the port side and train it on them. Right. As soon as they get within range, let them have it broadside. All right. Ready? Uh, Tarzan! What are you? Uh, he, he stabbed him. Tarzan's killed Kellen. Let him, man. Get Tarzan in. Cannon faces you now. Come no closer. He doesn't know how to fire it. Hurry, get to him. That boat's... I shall lower a ladder for you. Here. It's Tarzan. Natisha. Please, Allah, you are safe. He smiled, Ben Ahmed. Come aboard, all of you. I will reveal much to interest you. Dead pirates, the secrets by which they operated, and much of their stolen cargo. Some of my goods. Ah, yes. Much of it bears your name. Now you will have the will to live. And I? <laughs> I will be contented with the comparative safety of my jungle.
In just a moment, a word about our next exciting story of Tarzan. The caravan crossed the great Libyan desert. The camels were unloaded and the huge bales transferred to the broad backs of native quarters. Then the safari plunged into the tangled jungle. Cities were avoided and only the most remote trails were used, for the cargo was worth more than money. And secrecy was the byword in the story, Contraband, which we will tell in our next adventure of Tarzan. Tarzan, a creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced and transcribed by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.